welcome to Primetime Watchmaking in the News as we will quickly summarize the main newsworthy information of April 2016. But before going there, I just wanted to come back on the report published recently about this very young collector as it really created some serious discussion between you guys. Well, I'm really pleased to see such intense debating and we knew this would be slightly controversial, but I'm just amazed how sometimes this can get so virulent. We just want to have a good time and show as much as possible the entire spectrum of watchmaking and in a certain way, Andre is part of it. Just like some unknown suppliers or artisans that you won't see anywhere else but on the Watchers TV. But keep the comments coming, this is really cool. So, summary of this edition. Some changes for Basel World and the world of trade fairs. Three new Grebel Forcés, when crowdfunding and fine watchmaking collide, imported watch auction to come, and some other special news. So, let's go for the news of the month. So, Basel World is well behind us, but we've recently heard some important news regarding next year's edition, as there will be some serious changes. So far, nothing dramatic for the biggest watch show on the planet, but nevertheless, just another sign that Basel World might be losing a bit of its superb, as the Geneva Watch Week of January January is clearly on a dynamic move. At this year's SI Change, we saw the arrival of some independent watch brands and uh, in what was so called the Carrizology, a present that slightly shook up but in a positive way this great event and definitely brought some freshness to it, something that all the other brands benefited from. So the big news is that an additional five independent brands will be joining the SHH and we don't have the official list yet but we have a pretty clear idea of who we are talking about and we will naturally get back to you as soon as this is official. Additionally to the development of the Carrizology and symbolically speaking 2017 will also see the return in Geneva of Girard Perigot, one of the three founding members of the SIHH had they had chosen Basel World a few years ago when it was judged important to materialize all the brands owned by the powerful French luxury group caring under the same Basel roof. So this doesn't seem to be a priority anymore and Girard Perigot will not be the only ones heading to Geneva as they will also be joined for the first time by Ulysse Nardin, also part of caring. So what does this tell us? Well, for a start, we can clearly understand that some brands prefer the cozy and more exclusive ambiance of the SIH. As a quick reminder, in the official name of both events, we have Salon for the SIH and Foire, meaning fair for Basel. And in French slang, Foire is actually like party. So this kind of already tells you the entire program private event versus an event open to the public. But you really have to take into account that these events are mainly aimed at retailers and distributors that were coming to discover new watches and doing their yearly purchases, but this model has slightly changed over the years. On one side, most big brands have internalized their own distribution, and with the rise of digital media, almost everything is known before the show, well, before it actually happens, and or novelties are better spread out during the entire year to precisely occupy the media scene as much as possible. So by definition, the pure necessity of a fair such as Basel World is becoming less pertinent. And when you put into perspective the very significant costs of attending this event, whether you're an exhibitor or a retailer, then obviously you will start to think a bit more on how you are spending your different budgets. People are becoming more rational and to come twice a year at a couple of month interval between the two events simply doesn't make as much sense as it used to. And many of the big brands are already in a certain way present during the SIH, even though you don't see them there. Well, this makes for quite some overlap. So anyhow, I think the future of all those trade fairs will become more and more questionable and then I'm pretty sure we'll see some further but rapid evolution in the years to come. Nevertheless, the SIH cannot expand any further, just a question of size and logistics. But remember, for instance, that the yearly Hong Kong event Watches and Wonders, equivalent of the SIH, but for the entire Asia, has now passed to a biennial rhythm instead of every year. So let's talk about the product launch of the month and we will focus on some novelties presented by Grevel Forcé and to be totally honest, adaptation would be more accurate than full novelties but uh, it's always such a pleasure to discover new timepieces by one of the most extreme brands when it comes to full and utter commitment to quality, finishing, chronometry and so much more. Well, we had the chance of seeing these timepieces up close and personal. Firstly, we saw a new version in red gold of the Vision Tourbillon 24 Second, 24 Second, the timepiece introduced at the 2016-15, sorry, SIH, which presents some original and pure design feature. As a quick reminder, uh, this watch was rewarded with the Aiguille d'Or in 2015, the most prestigious prize of the GPHD, the Oscars of watchmaking. We also saw another red gold declination, but this time on the new signature model, the first non-tourbillon watch of Grebel Forcé and the goal of Grebel Forcé with the signature line is to partner with other watchmakers to develop these new timepieces. So I can't wait to discover the second iteration but when you know that it took them almost six years to come with this first one well we might have to wait a little bit but this is 
what I love about them. It's just like no compromise whatsoever. And finally, we saw also the art piece number two, and I'm pretty sure we'll get back on this in a dedicated video report. But this timepiece is kind of a mix between the art piece one, made in collaboration with microsculpture Willard Wigan, and a very special version of the art piece presented in Paris during a contemporary art exhibition, a watch that was dedicated to French Dada artist Robert Filou. In terms of other news, we've seen quite some uh, examples of crowdfunding projects of the last few months uh, when it comes to launching a new brand and its collection. We talked about this in some previous editions of Primetime, but most of these projects were centered around mid to entry level type of watches. But there is one exception with the Xapec project that wants to resuscitate a brand from the 19th century. And we're talking serious fine watchmaking with this uh, project. They apparently reached their first initial milestone and raised enough money to start the production of their first collection called the Kediberg and are aiming to produce 188 timepieces of this watch before expanding the line. This is really an interesting project and we will follow this uh, very closely and uh, we'll come back on it, I'm pretty sure, pretty soon. We also read an interesting article by Bloomberg focusing on the ever-increasing success of the German watchmaking industry. It's very discreet, products are generally very well positioned in terms of prices when you think of the quality of these timepieces, just think of uh, Arlang & Zöne, Glasshütte Original or Naturally Normos, just to name a few, but there are some other brands pointing their nose out there and uh, this also is going to be very interesting to follow. So, so, what to expect in May? Well, May is always an important month when it comes to watch auctions and all the main houses will have their sales in Geneva in mid-May. We will produce some special reports about this and show you in advance the main talking piece put on the auction by Christie's, Sotheby's and Philips. And we can already point out that this last house, Philips, will have an additional thematic auction around 88 steel chronographs. Quite a new approach and positioning when we're used to Patek and Rolex special auctions. On our side, I just want to promote a report that we will soon air because I know it will mark the spirits. On social media, we all see here and there this hashtag watch porn. Well, we're taking this to another level by simply removing the hashtag. So trust us on this one. And again, I think we will create some nice debating there. We will also shortly introduce a new visual identity. Here's a quick preview. And the goal was to highlight furthermore our Swiss origin and make the watchmaking dimension of what we do naturally a little bit more obvious. So thank you for your time. All the best. See you soon and keep commenting. Bye.